Hello, and thank you for listening in to learn about the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission's Snook Regional Management. This presentation provides background about the new management approach for Snook and provides a review of potential management changes for the state and some of the proposed management regions. The purpose of this presentation is to gather additional feedback for FWC's potential final rule recommendations to establish a regional management framework for Snook. FWC started the regional management approach with Redfish, and now staff is expanding this approach to Snook. This presentation was created because recently released data and stakeholder feedback has led staff to consider a change to what is planned to recommend for final rules for Snook. This is a change from what was presented during the August 2nd, 2023 workshop. Snook is an iconic and popular recreational fishery that is currently managed as two stocks on the Gulf and Atlantic coasts. This regional management framework would establish nine new management regions with seven management metrics used to evaluate the snook fishery within each management region. The evaluation of the fishery and stakeholder feedback within each fishery will be used to develop FWC's final rule recommendations. Staff would like to hear your thoughts on the suggested final regulation changes and this new regional management approach. Shown here is a timeline leading up to FWC's efforts on establishing the new regional management approach for Snook. In January 2023, staff started with an angler satisfaction survey to gain a better understanding of angler perceptions of the Snook fishery. This survey was sent to all four hire guides and a subset of recreational anglers, and staff received almost 3,000 responses. At the February 2023 commission meeting, staff introduced a new management approach for Snook that included new management regions and metrics. The new approach would manage the fishery at a more local scale and evaluate the fishery within each region using seven metrics. The holistic review of environmental and human factors allows FWC to better address regional concerns. In March, FWC held 12 in-person workshops throughout the state to gather feedback on the regional management approach and potential rule changes. Additional public comment was collected through the FWC Saltwater Comments webpage, email, phone calls, and small group meetings. At the May 2023 Commission meeting, staff presented proposed rules for Snook, which were approved by the Commission. In July, staff held three focus groups to gather input on the boundary for the Southwest region that would be used for all inshore species that are managed with this regional approach. This includes both Snook and Redfish. Ahead of the final rule hearing, staff continued to gather public feedback on rule options for Snook and held a virtual workshop in August. Before going into the potential rule changes, here's an overview of current Snook regulations in Florida. FWC manages Snook in state and adjacent federal waters, and the Gulf and Atlantic stocks are managed in separate regions as shown on the map. There are regulations that apply to both management regions and regulations specific to the Gulf and Atlantic regions based on differences in life history. For the regulations that apply to both management regions, this includes a bag limit of one fish per harvester per day, hook and line being the only allowable gear, charter captains and crew prohibited from retaining a bag limit while on a vessel for hire, and commercial harvest being prohibited. In addition, any person required to have a fishing license, including those with a no-cost shoreline license, must purchase a snook permit to harvest a snook. Those exempt from license requirements, such as residents over the age of 65, active military, etc., are not required to purchase the permit. Regulations specific to the Gulf region are the 28 to 33 inch slot limit and harvest being open during March 1st through April 30th and September 1st through November 30th. Regulations for Atlantic region are slightly different with a 28 to 32 inch slot limit and harvest being open during February 1st through May 31st and September 1st through December 14th. Snook harvest regulations are designed to help the fishery meet the FWC's current management goal. Snook has traditionally been managed based upon a target spawning potential ratio or SPR that is assessed on a coastwide basis. SPR is the percent of the total biomass of mature fish in a fished population compared to the number that would exist if the population were not fished. SPR was adopted as the Snook Fishery Management Metric in 1994 and was chosen because of the high social and economic importance of this fishery to the Commission and to the public. A 
Achieving the 40% SPR target maintains the stock above the biological limit of 20% SPR and maintains resiliency within the stock. An SPR at 20% or less is not sustainable, and managing for a higher SPR provides for higher abundance and a large trophy snook. SPR is estimated through a traditional fishery stock assessment. The most recent stock assessment for snook was completed in 2020, with data through 2019. The assessment determined that both Gulf and Atlantic stocks were exceeding the 40% SPR management target. The SPR in 2019 was determined to be 54% for the Gulf, shown on the top graph, and 52% for the Atlantic, shown on the bottom graph. Despite the positive results, the angler experience on the water doesn't always align with the findings on the stock assessment. The quality of someone's fishing experience can vary based on where they are fishing, as fishing experience is impacted by local variables such as environmental conditions, fish behavior and distribution, and fishing activity. Because of these reasons, it's important to bring in other information to provide a more holistic view of the fishery. This is one of the main driving factors for developing the new regional management approach for snook. Now that a background on snook management has been covered, the rest of the presentation will outline the new approach for snook in greater detail. Implementing a new approach for snook is the second major step in the overall transition to regional management for Florida's most popular inshore fisheries, and is similar to what was implemented for redfish in 2022. The regional management approach brings a holistic view to management decisions by using multiple metrics, including human and environmental factors, to evaluate the fishery on a smaller regional scale. This provides additional insight for management and more flexibility to address localized concerns. FWC is proposing nine new snook management regions throughout Florida, which are shown on the map. The coastal boundaries of these regions match the current redfish regional management boundaries and extend inland since snook are found in inland waters. Using the new management approach, staff evaluated the snook fishery in each region using the metrics of SPR, harmful algal blooms or HABs, stakeholder feedback, fishing effort, habitat, relative abundance, and temperature. This holistic approach can increase understanding on how regional environmental factors may be impacting the fishery. The results of the evaluation are summarized in an annual review for each region. The first draft of the annual reviews were posted on FWC's website, but staff have recently gotten updates for the relative abundance metric. Staff is producing a second version of the 2023 annual reviews, and those documents are currently going through ADA compliance before they can be posted to the website. Ultimately, staff use these evaluations, along with stakeholder feedback, to develop management recommendations. Shown here is an overview of staff suggestions for regulation changes based on updated metrics and stakeholder feedback. The potential final rule changes would include the establishment of nine management regions shown across the top row. The names of the management regions are abbreviated, and from left to right they are the Panhandle, Big Bend, Tampa Bay, Sarasota Bay, Charlotte Harbor, Southwest, Southeast, Indian River Lagoon, and Northeast. These suggested regulation changes are different than what was presented at the August 2nd virtual workshop. The changes and updates between August 2nd and now are called out with the orange color and WAM symbols. The changes are based upon re-evaluation of the metrics with recently released abundance index data for 2022 that came out later in August, as well as stakeholder input on the proposed rules that the commission approved in May. The suggested regulations, which staff want your feedback on, include a two fish vessel limit statewide, Previously, FWC was only proposing a two fish vessel limit for Charlotte Harbor. Slot limits, bag limits, and seasons would remain the same with two exceptions. For the Tampa Bay region, snook would be catch and release only beginning in 2024, which is different than what was proposed in August. And in the Charlotte Harbor region, staff still suggest to add September to the summer season closure. What has changed is that staff is also suggesting that September be added to the summer season closure for the Southwest region. More details are presented in the following slides. As stated, staff is suggesting a two fish vessel limit statewide. This is an update from the commission's proposed rule, which would have only created a vessel limit for the Charlotte Harbor region. A vessel limit would be in line with FWC's tradition of using a conservative management approach for snook. 
there is a general increase in fishing effort for snook across the state. Implementing a vessel limit for snook would be a proactive measure to promote a fishery with healthy abundance and sustainability. The recommended vessel limit for snook is also similar to how other inshore fisheries, such as redfish, are managed. This change from the proposed rule is suggested because staff have frequently received requests for a vessel limit for snook, and these requests increased after members of the public learned of the proposed vessel limit for the Charlotte Harbor region. This is the only suggested change from the proposed rule that would impact the entire state. Next is the Tampa Bay region. This region, along with all the others, was re-evaluated using the metrics after the 2022 abundance indices were released in August. The evaluation of the Tampa Bay metrics indicate varied trends. Updated abundance estimates of snook subadult and adults, which are fish between 8 and 24 inches, are shown on the lower part of the graph on the slide. That index had recently been the highest on record until a sharp decline in 2021, and then a further decline in 2022. The 2021 decline coincided with the red tide event in Tampa Bay that extended all the way into old Tampa Bay, which doesn't always occur. The orange arrows on the slide call out the abundance index values after the 2010 cold kill and the 2022 value. Last year's abundance index value was near the same lows as 2010 and 2011. Harmful algal blooms, specifically red tide, is another metric. For the Tampa Bay region, red tide is a common occurrence, which can impact inshore fisheries directly through fish kills and indirectly through habitat impacts. The map on the slide shows changes in seagrass within the Tampa Bay region. From 2020 to 2022, there was a 12% loss in seagrass acreage in Tampa Bay, the red area on the map. However, the seagrass acreage is still more abundant than it was in 1988. Outside the bay, within western Pinellas County, seagrass acreage has been increasing. Based on the updated Tampa Bay region metrics, staff is suggesting to make this region catch and release only beginning in 2024. Stakeholder feedback in this region was strongly in support of the regional management approach. There have been some stakeholders who have been advocating for snook catch and release only but this is not favored by all anglers. Some considerations staff would like to highlight include the declines in the abundance index have been linked to environmental events in the past, specifically the 2010 cold kill. As noted earlier that the initial decline in subabundance followed a red tide in 2021 that extended far into the bay. Staff is not able to decipher the exact impact the 2021 red tide had on the snook population and that is because red tide events are complex and their impact depends on multiple factors such as timing, location, and duration. The 2021 red tide event in Tampa Bay occurred from May through October 2021 and extended far inside the bay. Additionally, this region was impacted by an atypical winter red tide event in early 2023. Regardless, when the subadult and adult snook abundance index reached these lows in the past due to the 2010 cold kill, the Commission responded with fishery closures. After those closures, the index steadily increased over time. For the Charlotte Harbor region, the evaluation of metrics shows mixed trends. Red tide commonly occurs in this region, though the duration of the 2022 red tide bloom was shorter than average. Additionally, this region was impacted by an atypical winter red tide event in early 2023. Updated snook subadult and adult abundance estimates, shown on the graph on the slide, have been on an upward trend since 2010, with some fluctuations possibly linked to red tide, but abundance is not trending down. The highest abundance since 1996 has occurred in the last seven years. This region has experienced recent declines in seagrass acreage, ranging from 2 to 6 percent for the monitoring area. From 1988 to 2022, Seagrass acreage has declined about 6% in Lemon Bay and 18.5% in Upper Charlotte Harbor, whereas from 1999 to 2021, seagrass acreage has increased by 15% in Lower Charlotte Harbor and by 10% in Estero Bay. In addition to changes in seagrass acreage, there are concerns that an increasing presence of filamentous algae may be impacting seagrass and water quality. Based on the metrics, Staff is suggesting to extend the summer closure through the month of September. There was strong stakeholder support for the regional management approach, but there was no consensus on the season closure, 
as some preferred spring months to be included in a closure. Additionally, there are environmental and water quality concerns, including questions about how damage to mangroves from Hurricane Ian could affect the fishery. Based on available monitoring data to compare across years, there is a mix of recent declines in seagrass paired with long-term losses and gains. Despite the recent seagrass losses, the relative abundance of snook between 8 and 24 inches long has remained at high levels. Staff recognize that this part of the state is expected to experience a red tide bloom each year. These typically occur in the fall, which can overlap with the snook spawning season, which extends into September. Thus, the addition of September to the summer season closure, along with the vessel limit, would add further protections during the time when the spawning season overlaps with the typical occurrence of red tide. The proposed southwest region includes areas with varied habitats and different levels of human development. The metrics for the proposed southwest region show mixed trends. Fishing effort is variable, with a peak in 2020 releases that could be associated with displaced anglers from areas where snook was catch and release only. Red tide is a common occurrence in part of this region as well, and an atypical winter red tide event occurred in early 2023. There are knowledge gaps for some metrics due to minimal long-term habitat data collection and the absence of long-term FWC fishery independent monitoring for snook in this part of the state. Based on the Southwest region metrics, staff is suggesting to extend the summer closure through the month of September. There was general support for the regional management approach from stakeholders that attended the snook workshop held in this region. However, there were concerns about the snook fishery, lack of data, and increasing efforts in this area due to regulations in other regions. Regulations that are consistent with the Charlotte Harbor region should minimize shifts in fishing effort. Also, adding September to the summer season closure, along with the vessel limit, would add further protections for the local population during the time when the spawning season overlaps with the typical occurrence of red tide. An important note is that staff have been exploring a change to the management boundary for the Southwest region which was discussed in the series of focus groups in July. However, based on the outcome of the focus groups, staff determined that more work needs to be done to evaluate changing this region's boundary. Staff will continue this work in the next year and plan to return with a recommendation next fall. Now that the changes staff are currently suggesting to snook regulations have been reviewed, here is a summary of the potential final rule package staff could bring to the commission meeting in October. This is what staff is seeking your feedback on. The potential final rule changes would include the establishment of nine management regions and a new statewide two fish vessel limit. The current slot limits, bag limit, and seasons would be applied to the new regions, except for Tampa Bay, which would be catch and release only beginning in 2024 and the month of September would be added to the summer season closure for the Charlotte Harbor and Southwest regions. Staff would appreciate your input on the suggested final rules for Snook Regional Management presented, as well as your comments on other ideas for Snook rule changes. Let FWC know what you think by visiting myfwc.com forward slash saltwater comments and leave a comment. Please make sure to select Snook as the topic when submitting the form. Before concluding, here's some information on what comes next. Staff will continue to take public feedback on Snook Regional Management ahead of the October Commission meeting. You can email your comments to marine at myfwc.com or submit a comment through FWC's webpage at myfwc.com slash saltwatercomments. Staff will use the feedback to inform recommendation for final rules, which the Commission will consider at their October meeting. Comments submitted after staff's recommendation is released will be included in the summary of public feedback given to Commissioners for consideration before the vote of the final rules. This concludes this presentation. Thank you for taking the time to listen in. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact staff at marine at myfwc.com.